What Stephen Curry made clear in his 45.10 rebound outing on Thursday night where he sank stone cold daggers one after the other is that he's currently the best player in the world. Giannis has the defense and slashing, Kevin Durant has the shot making prowess, but Steph's unpredictability working with and without the ball in his hands make him number one. This video shows you the other players who deserve recognition in the first place conversation, but ultimately why as of right now, the three time champion deserves to be called the best player on earth, in my opinion. Before continuing, only 27.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're not in that percentage, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Giannis is still arguably number one after his all-time great 2021 postseason. LeBron's lost a bit of a step, but he's right there as well. Kevin Durant ranked number one on my top 10 players list back in July, and then there's the argument people make for the reigning MVP Nikola Jokic. With all due respect to Jokic, who's one of the beastliest players in our game, if Curry just had a bit more help around him, he would have probably added a third MVP to his trophy rack. Steph was the NBA's leading scorer, he became the first guard since Michael Jordan to score at least 25 points on 50% shooting in 9 straight games. Curry hit 85 threes in April, breaking James Harden's record for the most triples ever made in a single month. He only needed 58 games to reach 300 threes, becoming the fastest player to ever do that. Steph passed Wilt Chamberlain for the Warriors' all-time scoring record. Curry also averaged 5.2 threes per game, which was the highest total in league history. He wasn't robbed of the award because Jokic deserved it, but the case was more than there to say Steph was 2021's MVP. Playing on a team where the next highest score was Andrew Wiggins, he couldn't quite carry the Warriors to the playoffs. With the Warriors' new additions, the internal development of Jordan Poole, and ensuing return of Clay, that could all change this year. After a 19-point triple-double in the Warriors' opener in LA, which Curry called a brutal game, he responded with a clutch near 50-piece against the Clippers. Curry followed up a game where he shot 5 for 21 from the field by shooting 16 for 25 from the field and knocking down 8 three-pointers. That performance, along with the 41 piece that Steph dropped in the preseason, showed us Curry's picked up right where he left off from his MVP caliber season. In year 13 of his career, the now 34 year old Steph is playing the best basketball of his career as of right now. But considering when LeBron was 34, he was by far the best player in the league during his first year with the Lakers, Curry defying father time really shouldn't surprise us. With modern technology, NBA players are extending the length of their prime days. In terms of what happened on Thursday night, the Clippers quickly figured out in the opening quarter that there's no perfect method to slowing down Curry. Not when the man always figures out a way to burn defenses with his multi-dimensional sorcery, both with the ball in his hands and cutting off the ball without it. Watch how Curry just freezes Eric Bledsoe, leaving him in the dust on a simple low post split action. Next, with Iggy handling the rock, Curry brilliantly uses elusive body language to sell another cut to the basket, but instead pops up to the right wing and drains it. That play was a ram screen, a screen the screener, followed by a fake screen and a down screen set for the initial screener, which was Curry in this case. Curry was a victim of LA's aggressive traps, switches, and generally their physical brand of defense. Without Clay, as good as Jordan Poole is, there's no other shot maker near Steph's caliber right now. This forces Curry to have to overcompensate, and that often leads to mistakes. Steph committed 6 of the Warriors' 21 turnovers. Steve Kerr's offense versus Tyron Lue's defensive adjustments provided an early season thriller, as this one came right down to the wire. However, but watch on this play how Bielitsa just savvily slips to the basket after Morris and Jackson double Steph. That play the Warriors ran was a corner stagger for Curry, otherwise known as Motion Strong. The Clippers intend to deny him from running off the screens. The screen denial then turns into elevator doors. But as Steph started to figure out the Clips' defense, his one-on-one -on -one drives and pull-ups became increasingly available. LA's switch-everything strategy using a small lineup did give Golden State problems, but there were holes the Doves began to expose as the game progressed. 
Steve Kerr realized that Kennard was the liability to the Clippers on D, so Golden State targeted him. Forcing Kennard onto Curry and letting the chef mix up the sauce in isolations allowed the Warriors to use LA's switch everything scheme against them. Slowing down Curry at the point of attack, especially when you're Luke Kennard, is a near impossibility. The 45 points on 64-62-100 shooting splits and 82.7% true shooting from the chef is just one of many all-time great performances from the man. The daggers down the stretch of the game in the most crucial moments display that you can't keep a great player like Curry down for long. It's impossible for Curry to keep shooting poorly and for defenses to keep his dominance at bay. Sooner than later, his transcendence is bound to unleash. Based off the legacy Steph's carved out for himself, how he's thrived in Steve Kerr's system and turned the Warriors into a powerhouse, Steph's an NBA legend who won't be forgotten for centuries to come. Steph's going to pass Ray Allen this season for the most threes made of all time. Curry gets what he wants by hitting deep range bombs, plus using masterful head fakes, up fakes, pump fakes, and craftiness. He lets the game come to him, but when his team needs a bucket, he can always manufacture something. That capricious bucket getting makes Curry one of, if not the toughest player to guard across the NBA. You could go with Giannis and Durant, those are fair picks. I change my mind a lot, but as of this moment, I'm going with Curry and I think this video will age well. With how Steph's playing, I don't think I'll be changing my mind again anytime soon. But is Steph number one in the world in your opinion? You're the best for sticking around. This was D-Flow and I'll see you next video.